and sometimes I'll talk to people and they'll be like, tell me all that drama with you guys was like fake, you know, manufactured just for TV or whatever. And I was like, I wish I could tell you that, but that was all real. And actually the most vile, disgusting parts of it were off camera. Well, Tiffany, it's great to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Good, thank you. So tell me all about this new show, Reality of Love. Um, Reality of Love is a concept that was put together by Nicole. She is a love guru, love coach, and she invited me to be on two separate episodes. So I think there's one about dating as a person of color and then one that's a um, housewives episode because apparently there's a curse of being a housewife and then getting a divorce. But I told her, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> right, that doesn't apply to you. I mean, what was it like working with some um, former housewives as well? <sighs> Oh, they were great. All the other um, housewives, I had never met any of them before. And so, and I never watched, um, they were all from the OC. Mm -hmm. And I never watched that franchise because I never watched any of them before I joined the show. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have any preconceived notions of them. You know, when I met them, they were just normal women, moms, entrepreneurs that I was meeting. I wasn't like, oh, you're the girl that had this and this happen on TV. So we just started with a clean slate and they were all wonderful. Mm -hmm. so, what, what, so what do you kind of talk about during that episode? Are you kind of dispelling the rumors that not all relationships end because of reality TV? Yeah, we were um, dispelling the rumor that there's a curse of, mm -hmm. you know, housewives equals divorce. And then um, Megan um, talked a little bit about her divorce, which I guess is a little bit nasty yeah. with her ex. And then um, uh, one of the other girls was talking about like why she keeps dating um, unavailable men and she mm -hmm. thinks it's like, you know, circling back to daddy issues. I mean, it's just so crazy for people to like talk about their relationships and what problems problems they have, you know, it's really insightful. Definitely. And then tell me about the other episode. You know, you obviously you open up about dating as a woman of color. Yeah, the other episode I haven't um, had a chance to watch yet. Mm -hmm. And we taped it so long ago. I'm like, what did I say? Right. <laughs> you know, because you say it live or they film it, but then you don't like remember everything you sure. say. So I think um, I talked a little bit about, you know, dating um, as an Asian American woman. I always, um, before my husband, dated Chinese men. Like my two ex-boyfriends before my husband were Chinese and they were in medical school because I was in medical school at the time. And then I started dating my husband who's Korean. And I think to some people they're like, oh, Chinese, Korean, like, isn't that the same thing? And I'm like, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, and my parents were a little bit mm, not super supportive, let's just say in the mm -hmm. beginning. And especially because he had been previously married and had kids from his previous mm -hmm. marriage. Like, I think my parents just, didn't really accept that at first. So I had to overcome that hurdle. Yeah, that's a lot. And But you guys just recently celebrated how many years? 10, right? 10 years yeah. of marriage. Yeah. So it, was, it worked out. It did work out. It did work <laughs> out. And how did you guys survive, you know, that reality TV curse? Did, did being on Housewives, did that ever put a strain on your relationship? I think it did during filming because during our 12 weeks of filming, I was also working as a full-time anesthesiologist mm -hmm. during a pandemic. Right. And so I felt like I had a full-time job, you know, and then I was filming, which was like another part-time job. And I think what suffered was my relationship with my husband and with my children because I simply wasn't around. I was either in the hospital or filming for the show, taking a girl's trip, having some dinner party and mm -hmm. sitting there and arguing with people. <laughs> and I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, I would rather be at home right now, like with my kids watching a movie or having a date night with my husband but I'm sitting here at this dinner party arguing about the stupidest thing with these women that I like don't even know and I was like get me out of here there were so many times that when I watched my episodes back mm -hmm. that I had a look on my face that was like get me out of here it was <laughs> like so what apparent. am I doing Wait, yeah. was, did that kind of happen to you like maybe like a few episodes into the season of filming did you regret it were you, were you like why am I doing this yeah while I 
was filming, I wanted out. Really? Like, I wanted, I told my executive producer like so many times, like, I don't think I can do this. And she was like, you're not a quitter, Tiffany, you know, just <laughs> hang in there. And I'm like, this is so dumb. Like, I'm not having any fun. It's not at all what I thought it would be. Not how it was like really promised to me. Right. And I'm like, I want, I want off this ride. You know, when you go on a roller coaster and like, you know, 10, 10 seconds into it, you're like, mm, maybe this wasn't such a big, you know, a good idea. But then you're like strapped in, you know, and it's going. And and that's how I kind of felt. I felt it that I had been buckled into the roller coaster ride and like it was too late to push like the emergency stop button. So were you re relieved when the show was put on hiatus? Yes. Yeah. Relieved is the perfect word. You yeah. took that word out of my mouth because you know, um, we had shot test scenes for a potential um, next season. And I actually invited two of my real friends to be on the cast and shot test scenes with them. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, they decided to put the um, show on a hiatus. And I was like, oh, I'm so relieved because it just, it took up so much time. And, you know, I'm like a rather conflict averse person. Mm -hmm. And so to put yourself in situations where you kind of have to confront people people and deal with issues it was very um not my style so no. yeah I was when they made the decision for us I was like hallelujah <laughs> right well because I mean it is strange because I you know I'm a big housewives fan I watch it all the time but I would be like I would never act this way around my friends and never you know I'm sure you don't in with your real friends never call them out no. like like it does in the housewives world no and you also don't like watch a party that you attended several months ago and then find out that somebody was saying something unflattering about you or whatever mm -hmm. and then have to sit on a stage with Andy Cohen in the middle and rehash it like it's weird we don't do that in normal life you know right. what I mean totally. yeah it's, the whole thing is weird <laughs> really do you <laughs> still talk to any of the ladies at all yeah, I was just with Deandra last night because we have a mutual friend who had a birthday last night. Um, so I saw Deandra. Um, I always say to people, I talk to the exact same people that I did before I was on the show. Okay. Which is just Deandra and Mama D. <laughs> right. You know, I think Deandra kind of hinted that like you felt responsible for the Dallas hiatus. Do you want to clear that um, up and, and why she may have said that? I mean, I don't think I used the word responsible. I don't remember what happened, but when we found out that the show wasn't gonna be um, continuing, that it was on a hiatus, I knew, I was relieved. I was like, you know, cause I was really actually on the fence about even if it were to go on, if I would be able to do it. Cause work is crazy and everything. And I knew, I when I heard the news that it was going on a hiatus, I knew that she was gonna take it the hardest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, because I, knew that it was important to her and she had been on since like season two. So, you know, it, it was a big, um, had a big role in her life. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, I just did one season. I could take it or leave it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I called her and I was like, you know, how do you feel about the show being put on hiatus? And she was like, I'm really disappointed. Um, and I said, you know, part of it probably is because of all the drama that happened on and off camera mm -hmm. um, with me and some of the other castmates, one in particular. Um, and, you know, if that had anything to do with them not bringing it back or whatever, like, I just want to say that that wasn't my intention. My intention was not to, like, implode the show, you know? Like, I, my intention actually was to go on, make new friends, and have a good time. Right. Um, and then all that drama happened. And I said, you know, I'm so sorry if you think that... Um, I may have had any part to do with, you know, having the show not come back. And she was like, no, I don't blame you at all. Mm -hmm. Like, don't feel bad. Cause I just, you know, I knew she would be really disappointed. Right. No, definitely. Yeah. Have you, was, is there a moment from that season that you regret or that you wish you could kind of do over again? Yeah, I probably wouldn't have put crickets on everybody's pizza. That was not my proudest moment. But, like, they want you to do these, like, sort of prank things because it's sort of funny. Mm -hmm. You do it for TV moments. But then I would never really do that in real life. Sure. You know, but I did it on camera because I was like, I'm having a pizza party at my house. It's not the most interesting, like, event, you know? Mm -hmm. 
and and you do things to try to you know up the antics a little bit yeah. um but in my defense it's not like i went in my backyard and foraged for crickets those were like fda approved crickets that were like high in protein mm -hmm. they're supposed to be the food of the future i mean it came to my house in a package with mm -hmm. nutrition facts on the back you know so it's not like i was like trying to poison them you know what yeah. i mean um mm -hmm. but it's it is disgusting um <laughs> and i i didn't mean to make brandy you know throw up and all that stuff so you know that i do regret that but overall like in terms of things that i did or said or mm -hmm. at reunion like standing up for myself i don't regret any of that because mm -hmm. i really feel like some of my classmates just like came for me from the very beginning like and I think you know the fans are smart they are on it mm -hmm. and they are very perceptive and people were like oh my god like why are they on her case so bad and I'm like I don't know right. exactly but do you do you feel like it was like new girl in town that they were kind of like just maybe hazing you a little bit yeah it was definitely I think I even used that word mm -hmm. I was like I feel like I'm being hazed a little yeah. bit Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you heard from, or did you ever speak to Cameron after everything or no, have still never have? Nope. And sometimes I'll talk to people and they'll be like, tell me all that drama with you guys was like fake, you know, manufactured just for TV or whatever. And I was like, I wish I could tell you that, but that was all real. And actually the most vile, disgusting parts of it were off camera, you know, happened not, you know, during filming, but like after we filmed reunion. Right. Well, it's true that like her husband, right, her husband and her brother tried to get you fired from your job, right? Is that yes. correct? Yeah. Yes. So her brother, no, her husband and his brother, mm -hmm. which I'm like, men, like sit down, take several seats because yeah. last time I checked, this is called house wives of Dallas, not house husbands of Dallas. And then like his brother getting involved. I'm like, who are you again? Like what? What do you have to do with any of this? Mm -hmm. So they went on social media and insinuated that I was racist and then tagged my employer. So um, that's when I had to get my lawyer involved and I issued a um, story with Variety and Bravo then issued their public statement on social media the next day. So that was just a big mess. But I was like, how dare you take this little TV drama and turn it into something that actually affects my well-being, my career mm -hmm. that I worked my entire life for to become a physician and, and a highly respected one that mm -hmm. and how dare you try to tarnish my name because of what some silly social media slander you know like I was just so over it at that point I don't blame you I mean I can't imagine like like you said it's like a, when you put things in perspective it's a silly tv show compared to your entire career that you've worked so hard for yeah but I wouldn't expect her to understand any of that right yeah totally <laughs> I mean would you would you ever sit down with her and have a conversation if she ever wanted to you know, I always say that like when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Maybe as time passes and the wounds aren't so fresh and I don't feel so, you know, betrayed mm -hmm. um, that we could eventually sit down. But at this point, it's like, what's the point? Like, we're never going to be friends. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have hatred in my heart for her. I actually would love for her to like maybe realize what she's done and sort of, you know, become a better person. But I honestly don't think that's going to happen. I probably think she, that she thinks she did nothing wrong. Yeah, definitely. If the show, I mean, because, the, you know, Dallas, people love Dallas. And there's always talk that maybe it would come back on Peacock um, in a couple years after the hiatus. Would you go back and or would you would you go back if there was a new cast? If there was a new cast, I think there's a high chance that I would go back if they invited me. Who knows if I'd even be invited at this point? <laughs> um, I think I would because part of me feels like I didn't get the full Housewives experience. And what I mean by that is, you know, when Deandra was like telling me to be on it and have a call with the casting agent, she was like, oh, and every year they pay for us to go on a fancy trip somewhere and you're going to make all these new girlfriends. We're super fun. And, you know, you'll get invited to things like fashion week and I was like oh okay okay yeah. you know like that's kind of why I signed on and then we filmed in the middle of a pandemic our exotic cast trip was to Oklahoma right. 
you know, I did not go to fashion week. I did not make any new girlfriends. And I was like, this totally blows. So in in many ways, I would like a do over with a new cast. Like at least half of the people need to not be on again. (laughs) And if if you all knew that would be just fine. Me, Deandra and four new ladies would be perfect. Perfect. Sign you up. Yeah. And Mama D, you know, is the seventh housewife. I always say. Oh, um, 100%. 100%. I love that you and I know that you and Chris still are good friends. Do you keep up with Beverly Hills? Do you watch that season at all? Yes. I started watching Beverly Hills the first season that Crystal was on to like support her. And it's also more interesting, like when you actually know someone, right? Mm -hmm. And and she'll tell me a little bit of the behind the scenes, whatever. So I'm like, ooh, I want to see how it plays out. Um, So yes, I'm really good friends with Crystal. I saw her maybe a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, But usually when I'm in LA, we try to meet up because I'm in LA at least, you know, three or four times a year. But she's great. She is great. How do you think she handles these ladies? <laughs> she, you know, she struggled a little her first season, which is like, because it's so weird to have these cameras in your face and, you know, do these confessionals and talk about things. Um, so I think she struggled a little on her first season, but I think she got her like sea legs um, mm-hmm. season two. And then, you know, I saw like recently on an episode, she like confronted Erica and I was like, you go girl. Cause we're all at home, like saying those things, right? right? Like, why don't you just give the airing? back like Mm -hmm. whatever you know and and she like stood up to Erica which you know I think can be quite intimidating Mm -hmm. um so I think she's getting her groove I thought she did a good job I really did (laughs) she's doing an amazing job I told her I was like girl you gotta carry the torch for us because I was like I'm out you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. do you think that Bravo and Housewives they do a good job of diversity or do you think or, or could could it be better it, it could be better. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, a lot of the stuff that happened with my cast, um, a little, I don't know, diversity or sensitivity training would have been helpful. And, you know, when you drop like one person of color into an otherwise all white cast and then put the responsibility of like explaining why things are sometimes um, harmful, it, it's like a lot of responsibility on one person. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my whole season ended up being about like race and stuff like that. I did not think that when I signed up to join Housewives that I would be talking about race at all. It didn't even occur to me. Um, I really thought that I was going on to, you know, be fun and fluffy and have silly antics with my girlfriends. And then first thing out of the gate, they're like, talk to Brandy about her video. And I was like, oh, why? Like, I don't care about her video. And that video was like, you know, it was like a year ago. Yeah. But they're like, no, you got to talk to her about it. I was like, okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like they just kind of wanted to push a narrative a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. I know. And I'm like, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I, I just want to drink and have fun. <laughs> right. Totally. I want to go on this trip that you guys promised me. Yeah. When are we going to Morocco or <laughs> Dubai right. or something? Yeah. I, well, I hope you get the do over. I really do. I love seeing you on the show. It's okay. I mean, I don't mean to sound salty about no. it. it. And I'm, you know, I'm so grateful for the experience and mm-hmm. I don't regret it at all. The whole thing. Um, it's opened up so many doors for me. It's allowed me to make so many new connections and Mm -hmm. friends and so I'm so grateful for the experience but maybe down the line in a few years if they call me we'll Mm -hmm. have a do-over definitely well Tiffany thank you so much for uh, chatting with me today it was such a pleasure it was so nice talking to you all right have a good day thank you so much Bye. All right, bye. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.